Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs, and the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. And they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them. You can disagree with them, glorify them, or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They invent. They imagine. They heal. They explore. They create. They inspire. They push the human race forward. Maybe they have to be crazy. How else can you stare at an empty canvas and see a work of art? Or sit in silence and hear a song that's never been written? Or gaze at a red planet and see a laboratory on wheels? While some see them as crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy are crazy enough to think they, that they can change the world are the ones who do. We the people are the crazy ones. Our future must be saved by us. Not at the voting booth or in Washington, but in our hearts and minds. That's where great change begins. America is burdened with a crushing national debt of nearly $16 trillion. By 2013, this number may well increase to over $18 trillion. This number is embarrassing for both sides of the political aisle have contributed to this frightening number. As a nation, we cannot be proud nor accepting of this debt. We're suffering daily for it, and it must be corrected. Changing the course of reality is a, ma a major battle intellectually and politically. It requires us to change our thinking about politics in America. There isn't time to continue rooting for the donkey or the elephant. Instead, we must cheer for a new direction forward, a direction that is politically agnostic, independent in reasoning, and sound in judgment, and of course, guided by our priceless Constitution. Forging a new way forward won't be easy. It will require a lot of work on our part as citizens, activists, and influential voices. The first step is recognizing we do not require Washington's permission to save our country, for our elected officials are mostly irrelevant and lacking great credibility. Why should they have our respect? Being an American today is more than citizenship in the red, white, and blue. It means standing up to elected officials who've abused our trust for too long. It means speaking out on the wrongdoing of government. It means asserting our rights and protecting the few that remain. It's stepping outside our comfort zone to make a point or change the conversation. It's making a personal declaration that your life is more valuable than the typical politician. When the Declaration of Independence was drafted, our nation's architects didn't seek permission to, ev to develop a better society. They seized the moment to declare that an era of bad government was over. Today, we are faced with a similar event. We must declare our independence once more of a faulty government, not by violence or bloodshed, but by claiming our natural right as human beings to usher in great change. 
Government rarely asks the people's permission on issues that greatly influence our world and our society. The American people and the world must desire more for each other, our children, their children, and generations to come. Passing the buck of unsustainable debt and liabilities cannot continue, for the world has entered a dangerous phase of challenges that, unfortunately, captures our future in the hands of a very small few. The belief that a small body of individuals must always decide a nation's fate is rooted in man's desire to rule the world. Abuse of power is rampant for one simple reason. Public office requires a rare breed of individual to protect and respect the blueprint set forth for any modern society. The concentration of ego and power in the hands of few is never good for humanity. From the Roman Empire to Washington, man has proven countless times that we must rethink the functionality of societies and how they're governed. America is home to the greatest constitution of any nation on earth. Sadly, it is rarely exercised by society or the very politicians that carelessly swear to uphold it. Just as entrepreneurs innovate in business, we need to become intellectual innovators in government and money. We must discuss and consider sound and reasonable alternatives to current politics. We must think outside the box on everything. We must challenge politics as usual, everywhere. Current events demanded. Can we push each other to think beyond government as we know it? Can we inspire each other to develop community solutions for federal level problems? In the Northeast, communities are innovating currencies such as Berkshires, a highly popular regional currency for businesses and residents in Berkshire, Massachusetts. Their leading example of rooting out the ineffectiveness of central banking to control their own destiny should inspire more like it across the country. There's also Bitcoin, an internet-powered currency that's gaining acceptance worldwide. Innovation in currencies and government is a necessity in 2012 and beyond. The gatekeepers of government and money must be replaced with decentralized, community-driven efforts to carry us forward. The future of government will be unlike anything we know today. The internet will play a large role in transparency and accountability to all. Technology affords us an incredible opportunity to change government from the ground up. For example, imagine government being in the palm of your hand. Government may well be another app on our smartphones. With the right approach, government will never be the same. But it's imperative that we have bold ideas, bold thoughts, and bold initiatives. Fear of challenging the status quo will inhibit our progress and happiness forever. What's most important, your life or your government? We owe ourselves honest government and honest money in 2012.